This time we go Azure AD Hybrid and take a look at Azure AD Cloud Sync, the agent-based tool that's set to eventually replace Azure AD Connect to sync your on-premises objects into Azure Active Directory. But exactly how does it work? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's take a look. Greetings fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. Nice to see you and a very happy new year to you. And thank you so much for joining me, especially if this is your first visit. On this week's episode, I'm gonna take a look at Azure AD Hybrid. And specifically, we're gonna talk about uh, the agent-based Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync tool, which is set to replace Azure AD Connect as a primary sync method of syncing objects from on-premises uh, into the cloud. I will also talk about how it integrates with the new Microsoft Entra. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers. So bump the subscribe button, ring the bell up there, and you'll be notified of any uh, new videos. And if you enjoy the video, please do me a favor, bump the like button. It really does uh, make a big difference. And if you've got questions, comments about this and any of my other videos, then of course, please just get them down below and it'll be great to hear from you. All right, so I think without any further ado, let's jump into the demos and we'll come back afterwards. All right, in the meantime, you enjoy. So let's take a look at what's new for the hybrid cloud in Azure AD for January 2023. And in this video, I'm going to give you a full demo of the new Azure AD Cloud Sync and how it's improving. Well, first of all, let's have a quick look at what's new. So here I am in Microsoft 365 and I'm going to come into the admin center and in the Microsoft 365 admin center, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to come into Azure Active Directory. So one of the first things that you'll maybe start noticing is that Azure, when you go in, you won't see this dashboard anymore. It will just typically go into Microsoft Entra. Now, um, so this will be the, the new default for many of you. So this is currently being rolled out. So when you go into Azure Active Directory, you'll start seeing that Microsoft uh, Entra is actually split into three areas. So we've got Microsoft Azure Active Directory, we've got Permissions Management, which is CloudNox, uh, the product that Microsoft purchased last year. And we've also got the new Verified ID of Verified Claims. So here in Azure Active Directory, one of the things that you'll see or you'll notice is that it looks very familiar. And in fact, if you've been using Microsoft 365, the interface is really starting to look very, very similar. So first up, I'm going to go into Azure AD Connect. And in Azure AD Connect, you'll notice a couple of things. Um, first of all, we've got um, Azure AD Cloud Sync. So this is the updated version of the Cloud Sync tool. And what this does, it, it, it installs an agent onto your on-premises domain controllers. Now, one of, the, one of the problems with Azure AD Connect uh, in the past was it was quite a fat product. And if any of you have been working in the cloud for some time, you'll know that Azure AD Connect was based on Azure AD Cloud Sync as well as DurSync in the past. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the new updated version of Azure AD Cloud Sync. Now, I'm currently on a domain controller. So you can see here I've got my domain controller already and I've already taken the liberty of going ahead and prepping this. So I prepped it with my user account, UPNs, your user principal names. Um, I've um, updated the DNS, although we're just going to use, for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to use an internal DNS. The one important thing that I still have to do, however, is I'm just going to pop into the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. And in the Admin Center here, I'm going to click into our a, a datum domain, and I'm going to come into the 
recycle bin. So one of the first things that you definitely want to do in hybrid, of course, is enable the recycle bin because anything that you delete will be able to be recovered. So it will go into the recycle bin for 30 days. And should you do, uh, need to recover a hybrid object, you'll now be able to do that. If you don't enable that recycle bin, then you're going to have real problems. Do remember, though, that it's an irreversible uh, feature. So once you switch that on, you can't then uh, switch it off again. OK, now um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm now going to. So I've gone ahead, I've prepped my uh, environment. I'm now going to come into the Connect Cloud Sync portal here. So rather than me downloading an entire fat product of Azure AD Connect, all I'm going to do is just accept the terms. I'm going to download the agent and I'm going to go ahead and open that file. So um, I'm going to, of course, agree to the license and I'm just going to go ahead and install this. And I think during 2023 and the subsequent period, we're going to start seeing more use of agents. So rather than big fat pieces of software, I think you'll start to see this and it's going to be much easier uh, to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse this screen down just so that you can see it a little bit clearer. And I'm going to this is going to install the Azure AD Connect provisioning with it wizard. So first up, it's going to ask me to authenticate. So I'm just going to put my um, account details in here. I'm going to click on next. And of course, I'll just pop in my password. OK, again, this is just a demo account that I'm using. Then it asks me to authenticate to Active Directory. And you can see that it's already picked up my Active Directory at the moment. So all I need to do now is authenticate with my on-premises uh, administrator. So I'll just pop those details in here. And again, I'm just going to click on Next. Um, now, you can see um, if you're familiar with using Azure AD Connect, the, the idea here is that you just simply install the agent and everything else is basically managed uh, in the portal. So it's a very, very lightweight uh, little piece of software. Now, one of the benefits of installing the agent is that you can actually install multiple agents. So if you're working in multiple forests or in fact you've got um, a larger environment, what you may can maybe want to do is install multiple agents. OK, so once the agent has been installed, all you do now is simply exit the a. We just exit the software. So I'm just going to click on close. And again, I'm just going to go back into my uh, portal here. So now that that agent has been done, I'm just going to close that down. Uh, again, I'm just going to refresh this page now. And that's it. So the agent is running um, and you'll now see that the new configuration option has now lit up. So which means that the agent is running, but we haven't actually gone ahead and created any configurations. So what we need to do, of course, is we need to create a configuration and it will say which Active Directory would you like to uh, sync? Now, again, in this demo here, you can see I'm only using one uh, Active Directory forest, which is adatum.com. And you can see here that the default is enable password hash sync. So just to like just to be clear, um, password hash sync, what it does is it syncs a user account, computer's account, contacts, and so on, that it doesn't sync the password. It does a password hash. So it does a password hash of a password. It then runs that through a secondary hash value. And it's then that secondary hash value gets what we call salted. So it throws a random number on the end and it then pops that into the cloud. So at no point does the user's password ever get um, synchronized with the cloud. So in actual fact, this is probably one of the safest methods. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept those settings and I'm going to go ahead and create. And what this does now is it now starts the syncing process. Just a quick note, by the way, there is a configuration guide and supported topologies. So supported 
Active Directory designs. Make sure that you read those. Um, it's important, okay? Okay, so now that the configuration is done, now we can actually start configuring it. So you can see that we have got the a datum in, so our users are in. Now what you can do now is we've not actually started syncing yet, so it's asking you, do you want to... So as you can see, we've not started syncing yet, so it's asking you, do you want to set some filtering scopes? So what do you want to do? What do you want to sync all users, selected security groups? So if you selected that, you could then select the specific security groups or bring in specific organizational units, okay? Now, um, that's quite useful if you're a large organization. Let's say you want to bring in London this week, you want to bring in New York next week and so on. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to bring in all users at the moment and I'm gonna click on done. So now we move down and the next one is attributes. So we've got the objects, are there any attributes? Now it might be possible that on premises, you have got some custom attributes configured. Um, you know, you've uh, Azure Active Directory, just like Active Directory, of course, is a database. So you can see what we've got uh, in the cloud and the source where it's coming from. Now, Azure AD will do a pretty good job at syncing the various items. But if you want to go in, you can edit these and you can uh, customize that. That's really important. Sometimes this is quite important if you've got things like a HR system on premises as well. So uh, again, for the purpose of this demo, I won't bother with that. But um, again, it's definitely something you probably want to look at. Um, now, what one of the options that we do have, you can provision a user. Now, it's recommended, so just choose one of your users. And what this will do is it will just test the connection. It will test that everything runs okay. Again, for the purpose of this demo, I'm, I'm fine. I'm quite confident that everything is going to be okay. So the next thing that you're going to need is a notification email. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste my admin account in here. This is just for demo purposes. And what this does is it, uh, you can also put in a little checkbox. Again, this is a new feature. And what this does, just like in Active Directory, it prevents an object from being accidentally deleted. So if you tried to delete something, then it would come back and it would say, you know, hang on, are you absolutely sure that you want to do that? Uh, we also do have a threshold number now of 500 objects. So again, you can uh, you can increase that and decrease that as well if you want to. So now that we're ready, am I absolutely can, happy with this? I can go ahead. I can save that configuration. So am I have now? You'll notice at the moment we haven't deployed that yet. So again, take your time with this area. This is really important. Um, and when you're ready, um, I can go ahead and I can click on enable that. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to just double check. I've done the scope. I've managed the attributes. I'm using a uh, password hash sync. Uh, again, you can provision a test user. I didn't bother with that in this demo. Um, also, one other new feature, which um, I'd just like to point out with you. Um, if I go back into Active Directory, um, so if I go back into Azure Active Directory in Microsoft 365, you'll now see that we also have an additional Microsoft service account. And this is a very low level account. You can see it's unlicensed and this is just used for running various services. So for example, when you're installing agents or pieces of software, you can use the service account, which is a really nice feature. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to enable this now. And again, I've made a change. I'm just going to go ahead and click on save and I'm clicking on yes. All right, so that will now start the sync process. Um, I've now enabled that and we'll come back in a few moments and see what happens. So I'm just doing a quick refresh here just to see if there we've got users that are coming through. 
Here are our users. You can see that these come in from on-premises. Now, the one thing that you'll notice about these particular users is that when I, if I come into Abby here, for example, you'll notice that Abby, first of all, she's unlicensed. And you'll also notice that her account is blocked. So one of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to assign her a license. Once you've assigned her a license, you'll then be able to go ahead and unblock the account. All right. So I've gone ahead, I've assigned my licenses. And of course, now the next thing I need to do is I can unblock that sign in. And there we go. So I'm going to remove that checkbox, save the changes. And there we go. Abby is now a fully licensed user. Now this can take up to 30 minutes before she'll be able to sign in. Although through, from experience, it does. It, it's not normally that slow. Now, one of the big questions that I get is, Andy, um, uh, the Cloud Sync tool seems to just do password hash sync. What about the other options such as Federation? Well, you can still deploy Federation. If I come into here, into well first of all you'll see the status it's enabled password hash sync is enabled the last time it synced was an hour ago everything looks to be fine by the way i can go into the agent itself and while in the agent here i can see the healthy i can see it's healthy if i want to make changes um, again this is really nice um, it shows you the last time it's synced um, so you've got like the little log here um, and you can see the, the job status there is complete and everything's looking good. Um, you can review all the, the agents. I can actually also go into the logs themselves. So it shows me every object that it's syncing. Just give this a moment to refresh. And there we go. So you can see the objects that have synced. Everything's come through. Again, you can, you can go into this, have a look at this. You can drill down into it. Um, if there were any issues, it would have a little red cross and you could then do uh, more of an investigation. Um, you've also got things like troubleshooting uh, recommendations here. So at the moment, everything's looking great. Um, also things like um, if you've modified any properties. So if you changed any of those attributes that I mentioned earlier, again, they would be there. And again, you get that nice summary here as well. Now you can also download the log files as well. And again, you can either download them as a JSON or as a CSV file, and you can then view them in the likes of Microsoft Excel. So that's a really nice uh, feature. The other thing that I want to uh, mention is I'm commonly asked, uh, Andy only does password hash sync. What if I want to do pass through authentication, federation and so on? So can I enable those options? Well, yes, you can. So I can go into Federation here and you can add in a custom domain. So with the um, things like you need to have a custom domain name for uh, that if you want to federate with a business partner or something like that. Um, you've also got seamless single sign-on. So this is more of a troubleshooting page. So if there were any kind of issues with uh, single sign-on, um, that would show you that here. Now, if you want to deploy pass-through authentication, you don't need to deploy Azure AD Connect. All you need to do is just download the agent here. So there is a, a, a nice little agent here. Just accept the terms. Of course, download that agent. And again, once that agent is installed, um, you can then go in and uh, just configure it. So yeah, do you want to go in and put in the authentication package? So yes, I do. So I simply just click into that. This just takes a moment or two. Again, I will need to authenticate. So again, I'll just put in my uh, details here. So just put in my admin. And there we go. Alrighty. Okay, so now that the agent's installed, I'm going to come back into Azure AD Connect, and you can see that we've got pass through authentication enabled here. And you can see that everything is running. And again, I've got a green light. Um, and again, um, if you do have any issues, we have a good 
uh, troubleshooting guide there as well. So just the other thing that you might want to download is the health monitor. So there is a little package that um, just lets you know if there are any issues. Um, it's called the uh, Connector Health. This has been out for quite some time. So the last thing that I want to quickly show you is um, I'm going to come into Protect and Secure. And I'm going to come into, um, you've got multi-factor authentication here, of course. But one thing that I do have here is authentication methods. And we have some recent additions to the different types of authentication that you can have in um, Azure AD. So we can use FIDO keys. So these are these um, FIDO keys. And this is useful for things like passwordless authentication. You've got the Microsoft Authenticator app if you want to deploy MFA, of course, and you want to use the Microsoft Authenticator. Currently in preview, we have SMS. And of course, I've done a video on temporary access pass uh, previously. We now also have support for third-party OAuth tokens as well. So for example, if you're using a Google or an Amazon Cloud or something like that, you can use that. You can also configure things like voice call settings. And you'll notice um, we now have an email one-time password option for our new users. So I can go into, and I can say either all users or selected users and groups. Do be careful if you choose these methods and you're choosing all users. Remember, all users does mean all users. So be careful of that. You might want to just add in, uh, for example, certain groups. Um, so for example, I've got a group here called, uh, let's see what we've got. I've got a group called managers. So if I go in and I'll select the managers group here, and I'll go in and configure this, and I'll say enable a uh, one-time password for this particular group. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to save those settings. And they will now be able to take advantage of that feature. So pretty simple, really. Um, other things, you've also got the certificate-based authentication. So if you're using a, a, a certificate server, or you've got a certificate service from a vendor, you can then start to deploy certificates to your users and, of course, uh, your devices as well. So check out the authentication methods uh, now available in Azure AD. So there you have it, Azure Hybrid. Isn't that cool? Hey, listen, thanks so much for joining me this week. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, bump the like button up there. It really does make a difference to the channel. And of course, I love your comments and questions. Please just get them down below. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please help me out by bumping that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll get notified of any upcoming videos that I've got. And I've got some pretty cool stuff coming. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time. I'm Andy Malone. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.